why you all have for a while. Today I'm going to be looking at the Spectrum Vega. Not the Vega Plus. The Vega Plus is definitely a story for another day. Uh, a lot of people have covered that already in very long in-depth videos. Um, let's just say that the Vega Plus was a, a mistake from start to finish uh, and can be used an example in the future of how not to run a business. The fact that they even lost like, the, the, Spre the Sinclair branding from it and they tried to put it back out as well. But anyway, I'm getting into it. Don't need to do that. Um, the Spectrum Vega, what was it? It was designed as a handheld. I think it was around about 2015 it came out and people wanted it because they wanted to reimagine the Spectrum. Nothing had been out for a while for the Spectrum uh, and they wanted something that was literally a pick up off the shelf, plug and play and enjoy the games that you used to play as a kid. Um, and for that, I think it is okay. Um, the problem that we've got is, well, here you see it's got 1,000 inbuilt games. And to get this on the shelves with inbuilt games in it, you need to think about licensing and everything else. Um, and that's where you have a bit of issue with this. Um, that you don't have any ocean games, you don't have any like Codemaster games and stuff like that. Games that you probably would remember like Dizzy and stuff like that are not going to be on here. Like not, you know, off the shelf plug in and play. There are ways around that, I'll get to it a bit. Um, this was backed in Kickstarter. Uh, the issue I have here is the second production run. And I know that there was a first production run as well for the people who backed it. Um, I just, just had a look on eBay as well of what these things go for at the moment. Uh, and I've seen them sell as cheap as £10. Um, and I've seen them up to like £80. So, you know, it's, it's a definitely why you, just, you can get lucky and pick one of these up. I did also see, and I didn't know until I just saw it like literally five minutes ago, there was a gold one of these as well. And I don't know whether it was just like very limited run first, the, like the main backers or people who put the most amount of money in. But there was one on there and it just sold for, was it 250, 260 pounds? Uh, that's crazy. That's definite collector's territory. Uh, right, anyway, I got this one from CEX, believe it or not. Uh, about two years ago, somebody messaged me and says, oh, well, um, I've just gone past the CEX shop. I've noticed they've got a Vega in the window. So I, I got online, picked it up, and I think it was probably about 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that. I'm very happy to pay that. Um, but talking about price wise as well, I know that um, Jim Tendo recently picked one up and he got one for a tenner. So, you know, you can get them out. Don't, I, I wouldn't pay the 70 quid price tag. Is it worth 70 quid? No. Definitely not worth the 70 quid. £10, £20? Yeah. Nice. Nice for that. Nice collectible to have. I think that's the main key really, is collectible. Because, anyway, we'll get onto it in a bit. The reasons why I don't think um, someone who is a is a hardcore spectrum fan would definitely stick their nose up at this you know what i mean but you've got to think of it as what it is it's a plug and play as plug and plays go is it good hang on let me there's one down here excuse me a minute i picked this one up from a charity shop to do a video on and it's a bit of an odd plug and play um but this is the quality of like what some plug and plays can be this is terrible um, all this has is five flight games on it, and all of them are the same. You know, I mean, there's literally the, the plane is different, it's, it's awful. I, I, I was going to do a video on this, but it was generally so bad I didn't bother. I paid a whole two pounds in the charity shop. Look, uh, and one part that made me laugh about this is you've got the joystick here, and I noticed there was like another one at the top here. Clearly, it's got like the stop bit missing. I thought, well, what does that do? Is that like guided missiles? Is that what? No. <laughs> That little tiny joystick on there, on top of the joystick, does exactly the same as what that joystick does. So what's the, what's the point? Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, quality of plug and plays can vary greatly. So it's not a shit plug and play like this. You know what I mean? This was bad when you bought it. As far as plug and plays go, this is one of the better ones. It really is. So we'll get onto that in a minute. I keep saying that, I'll get there soon. Let's have a look at the box first, because uh, I, I think this is a really important part of this whole Spectrum Vega thing, because they nailed it. They really did. I mean, yes, you've got the, not the normal Spectrum on the front, you've got the Vega, but it looks like a Spectrum box. 
I wish I'd actually brought one down. I've got some up on the shelf there. Um, even down to the, the artwork on the back, if you know what I mean, showing you how to plug it in. That's exactly the same. Is If you picked up a Spectrum back in the day and picked up this one, it's like it's a mirror image, apart from it's updated that that's not a Spectrum 48K. That's the, you know, the Vega. Um, so, yeah, box-wise, everything like that, definitely nailed that. It's really nice. So, yeah, we're just going to get onto the, the device itself, obviously. At the moment, I have Cray 5 playing in the background. Um, that's the one I'm going to get to in a minute because, because it doesn't have the license for like the ocean games and things like that. I have found it's got a lot of homebrew games on it. And for me, I like the homebrew games. And there's a, there's a story behind Cray 5. Right. The device itself is this. Um, as you can see, it is styled on like the rubber key spectrum. You know the um, the form factor of it. It's it's nice. A bit sharp on the corners as you're holding it, like round here. As you can see, it's like properly digs in if you're holding it like that. Um, the buttons on here actually do feel like the buttons from the original rubber key Spectrum, and you've got some functions buttons down here and your return button. You can't accidentally knock that. Uh, it is properly nicely placed out of the way. D-pad have an issue with this d-pad it's not bad um it feels quite nice for you it's a bit, a bit hard you know but it's overly sensitive uh i'll show you a game in a minute um what was i playing oh i can't remember the name of it um i'm in shock that was it i'm in shock and it's a 16k game and it's a game where you have to be quite precise because you've got to move the character on the bottom just shoot up and bounce off things and kill the guys at the top but you it's like all the, like a grid and when i was trying to be precise and get to the one it was like too far too far back too far forward too far back and frustrating and that's the problem i have with this d-pad it is way too overly sensitive good points about it i mean you've got plenty and plenty of cable <laughs> yeah you know i mean and that's it's, that's still plugged in around the back of the tv over here and to the power cable now it's got two one of them goes to the tv and the other one is the power coming in uh, and it's composite out. I think this, if this had had HDMI out, would have been so much better. Um, it really would. 2015, there's no reason why they couldn't have had HDMI out. Um, the reason why they went with this must have just been cost. But if you'd have had it with HDMI out, yeah, would have definitely been a game changer. Right, and I also said as well about the um, the preloaded games and the fact that you don't have like your Dizzy and your, your, you know Codemaster and Ocean and stuff like that. But what it does have, that's why I can't really complain about it, it's got an SD card slot. The SD card slot means you can put your own ROMs on and load them up on here. So to say that it hasn't got all the big hitter games, they've given you an option to add more. So yeah, that that's just a little you know what I mean pick up right but there's a thousand games on there and I'll tell you what with a thousand games that are on there because it hasn't got those big hit games I'm trying games that I never played back in the past and I'm coming across some good games which I'll probably will play in the future but I'm also coming across an awful lot of rubbish um, I'm finding games on here that must have been like games that kids coded in their bedrooms and were like no <laughs> that's just it's never going to be released but um, yeah just going to get on with it. I'll talk about the Cray 5, as you can see. That's a 2011 game. Give me a second, I've got to reach over here to the, the actual game. This is where I drop a load on the floor. Right, code uh, Cray 5, I have a copy of it here. Right, this is what shocked me that it's actually um, on this Vega. Is This was a limited run by uh, Monument Games. And you can see it's limited to 18, well, it's limited to 50, and I've got number 18 of 50. Um, this also has got the extra badges and stuff in as well, which it just, it's, it's collectible wise, that's like the top one you can get. Copies of this, I've seen sell for 150 pound. So when I plugged this in and was just going through and saw Cray 5, I was generally like, wow. So if you just want to play the Cray 5, but uh, it's actually really good. I'm just crap at this game. I haven't got a clue where I'm going. Think of it as jetpack with like you've got to fly around, open doors, get keys, everything else. You know what I mean? 
and go through the levels, oh, I get lost. <laughs> it's nice to have. This is it proves that definitely more. I'm more of a collector of these things than than anything else. I love having this. I didn't pay the 150 pound for this. I wouldn't. I couldn't, to be honest. But it's nice to know. And it's nice that there are actual modern homebrew games on this. So let's uh, let's flip the camera around. Um, look at the screen, go for a couple of the games, go for the menu screen and just then give final thoughts on what I actually think of it. Um, so yeah, let's get on with that. See you in a minute. Right, here we are. This is the main screen. And one thing that comes across straight away, and I think it's what bugs me the most about this device, is the picture quality. This isn't my TV. Everything, I'm used to playing Spectrum games and I know what they look like. I mean. I know I'm not the best with colours because I'm colour blind, but even I think these are a bit off. Everything's a bit too dark. But everything is just blurry. And I think it really spoils the game because the one good this one thing the Spectrum has always been great for is a really crisp image. You know, you can say what you want about colour clash and everything else. Um, but the the image has always been quite sharp on the TV, especially if you've like if you've got like a composite modded um, like Spectrum or something like that, or you're doing it for the SCART or whatever else. Um, this is just, it really spoils it. It's blurry. The writing down here, I mean, look at it. You can just tell it's bleeding into each other. It comes across worse on that shoulder screen than it is coming through the camera because I'm looking at it through the lens now. Um, anyway, while we're here, let's actually might as well click on for a minute and see Cray 5 before we go back to the main menu. So this is Cray 5, and you've got, a, you're this jetpack guy. And yeah, just go around the puzzles, don't touch anything that's gonna kill you. I've never got very far in this game. And you pick up your keys. I mean, it works quite well, I, I, tell you, I keep landing on them. But again, the color plan, everything's blending in. I, I, do you know, I'll have to do a comparison um, of actually loading up, say like this Cray 5, and do a comparison between the two because it's it looks okay like this but until you've actually played the real one or just the real games you, you can notice a difference you really can i like the music on cray 5 it's quite nice it's a nice addition to have on this as well right anyway back to the menu we'll explore it for a second um yeah, just again, writing and all the rest of it, it just comes through just a bit blurry. This is the main screen. Oh, hang on. Let me go back a second. I missed it. Um, yeah, press two, and that'll give us the honor roll. Select your character. Did I miss it? I pressed two. There we are. So, this is the honor roll of all the people who um kick, uh, who backed this on kickstarter yeah all of these and uh that's the person i know that backed it <laughs> and he's still proud to this day every time it comes up he always says i back that um, I don't know how much it was to back it back in the day because I know I think he's actually got one of the first edition ones. Um, what we got? View right holders. Um, so we've got A. That's one of the little menu buttons down here. On a roll. Roll of honor. But yeah, that's uh, all that. That's just all stuff you can go through and go, I've got my name on this. <laughs> so, C, launch the games. Let's get back to it. So, all the games are in alphabetical order, and you can scroll through, and there is there's quite a lot on here. Um, there are um, the ultimate play of the games on here. So, with that, we can play Jetpack. And you know what? Any device that I can play Jetpack on is not a bad... It'll always give you... I have come across uh, some games on here that just don't work at all because you need like the number pad, which you can put a virtual one on here, but it just doesn't work very well. So here we go, we've got Jetpack. 
and again is just blurry. Um, you can press up and down to go up, or you can use the buttons to to go up. I know what buttons am I pressing? I'm just going to press up. So yeah, that D-pad again. After a while, I found it really starts to hurt your think your thumb because it really it's it's hard to explain. It just hurts your finger. It's it's really hard to press. Not as hard as the Vega Plus. And yeah, it definitely is not the worst D-pad I've ever used. But as far as the sensitivity goes, that's what annoys me the most. Um, and I just I can't forgive it that for that for games that should be so simple if they could have just dialed down the sensitivity a little bit i would have been very very happy i've just realized now i'm just playing jetpack <laughs> i'm just chatting away i might as well keep going till i've got it filled one more I do love jetpack though um jetpack uh, i think my favorite port on it is the vic 20 and it's really odd that the vic 20 got a port loads of other places got a port the N64, N64, C64, get it right, never got a port of Jetpack. Well, never an official one, anyway. So that's it, I managed it to the next stage. Uh, you just press your reset button, brings you back out to the menu. And, I don't know, let's go. Because there was, what was the other ones? There were some other homebrew ones on here. Um, was it M? Multi Dunes, I think it was. Myth, great game. Multi Dunes. Oh, there it is. So, Multi, this is another homebrew one. And it's really nice to have these homebrew ones in here. But you're not getting the best port of it. Again, I think I'm going to have to play this together because I don't even think the sound's the same. It's nice that they load really quickly. Uh, and multi dudes. Yeah, it's coming through worse on camera than it, uh, worse in person than it is on camera. The camera is making it look a lot brighter than it actually is. The idea of this game is to get the guy to the exit. It's simple. But you have to do it with the two people. And solve the little puzzles as you go. Nice cheery little game. Again, do have this as an actual physical type. And he's out, so that way, look, don't want to do it, so he blocks the way. There we go. That's it, simply, it just keeps on going more and more levels. Um, I'm in shock. That was the one I want to go to and actually show you because that's the one that really bugged me. I'm in shock. There. I apologise for the sound on this one. If you have got earphones in, turn them down a bit because this is a 16K Spectrum game with classic Spectrum sound. Ear piercing. But look, I'm trying to I'm trying to loop, move to this one. See how this is like a diagonal, and I just need to get just just that one. No, it just doesn't what. I'm, I'm really trying. I am actually there. Got it. That is not acceptable as a control. It's just too sensitive. Okay, let's say I want to get to this brick here. There, shouldn't take that many goes. Right, let's best turn this one off before it gives everybody a headache. Hang on, let's kill somebody first. See, so that's how it works with this game. Right, so that's the sensitivity issue I have with it. I don't like that. It makes games harder than they should be. It really does. Uh, a couple more games in there. What do we have? I, I should do a video now. Actually, go for Eggheads as well. That's a really good homebrew one. Uh, what was it? The fifth one has quite funky music. Let's see. These are really quite simple games. 
Oh, a simple guy with a die. Oh, that's it. I didn't press jump. That's why. I wonder who they got the idea of having an egg that rolls when they jump. Look. See, good music. <laughs> I'll just get it in here. Kill the egg. <laughs> I'm just going to keep dying. Anyway, I was only going to show you the music. Um, a couple more. Couple more. What else we got? Should we do just a random one? Oh, what? hang on. Is it I need speed? There was a game I played. Ocean Racer. Racetrack, that's it. Okay, this is what proves to me that this has got an awful lot of filler. That these games should never, would have never been released, would probably been typing games. Racetrack. Are you are you ready? I don't think you're ready for this. And, and you can't even understand how bad this controls. You know. I, I hope this is the right game anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, there. To, to, to move it, I have to press these keys, and it makes it go north, south, west, or east. It's a driving game. So. <laughs> I'm the dot, if you haven't heard. And I'm I'm trying to go left, uh, right. Now I have to go up. Right. No, it crashed. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is one of the main reasons, of games like this is one of the main reasons why this thing is absolute rubbish. They got every game that was like just... Nobody had rights to her or anything else because they were just coded in someone's bedroom. Nobody give a crap about them. Let's take them and put them on here and say, oh, it's a thousand games. It's still better because it is actually a thousand different games. It's not like you've got these um, Famiclone things where it's like, yeah, 10,000 in one games and you've got 10 and it repeated over and over again or whatever. So there are different games in it. And to, to discover games like this and just how bad they actually were... It's quite novel. Uh, I wish there was games like Death Ch 3D Death Chase on here and stuff like that. I've got different ways to play it, yeah. But games like that would have been great for somebody who doesn't remember the Spectrum and can just pick up and play. Um, I don't know. Two more, two more. What should we do? Should we, hang on. Yeti? That's the only one on the Y. Saxon. Yeah, why not? Shooter. See you. Oh, no, it's not what I thought it was. Yeah, it's a fairly fun game. These monochrome ones don't seem too bad. I'm sure with this one you can change... There. I knew you could. Just shoot these guys. I've definitely played this game before. Don't remember where, but this game definitely rings a bell. And do you know what? I think that is what this is great for. It's making you go, this game that I, I, I remember, and you just suddenly discover it again and go, actually, wow, that's um, that's actually quite good. Um, I got S. Don't know why. Uh, see, look, Saber Wolf on here. So you got, you have got some good ones. I, I like the music and this this little intro script. I really do. School days. That's on here. Snake bite, snooker. Spectrum chess. Spin dizzy, splat. Because everybody remember splat. Uh, oh, 
stunt car. No, that stunt car race is not going to be on here. Supercar. Super Sport. Super Kid. And there goes another ambulance past. Honestly, that's why I need to stop recording in this room. I know Wolverhampton's not the nicest place, but... Oh, Switchblade! Uh, I know it's not the nicest place, but it is generally because I just live on a main road where it's like the main route from the out hospital to wherever they need to go. So, anyway, Switchblade, last game I'm going to play. So there are some good games in here. You've got to fight rifle through the absolute rubbish and everything else. I still know there's one other game I will finish on. Switchblade is quite a good game. I still think Switchblade plays the best. See, I can't see that properly. On the Amstrad. Amstrad to me is the best place for Switchblade because that's actually quite difficult to make out. And I don't think that is the Vega. I think that's just the port. There, killed him. I just wanted to hear what the music's like. You have to wait for a second for it to get going. Do you know what? I'm definitely glad that I played this originally on the um, Amstrad. This is actually hurting my eyes. Oh, come on, get to the music and I can turn it off. There it is. Eh, it's not too bad. It's definitely better on the Amstrad. I think I played Switchblade on the uh, on the no that was Midnight Resistance, and I did not like the Commodore 64 port of that one. Thought the Spectrum one was far superior. Stumbles a bit, doesn't it? Right, hang on, one last game because I, I was playing this the other day, and I just want to finish on it because I like the name of it. E. Eric and the Floaters. An actual proper port, official port, on the spectrum of Bomberman. Hudson Soft. This is the Spectrum Bomberman. Aren't you glad you played it on something else? Oh, get in there. Go. There's the controls again. Terror. Look. Well, that's one way to die. <laughs> I, for games like this, right, it reminds me of Pac-Man. Do you know when you're playing Pac-Man and you've got, if you're playing it with like a really bad port, and it's that split second of, oh, you hover backwards and forwards over where you should just be turning left, turning right, turning up, turning, you know what I mean? If you've got to realign yourself. See if I can actually blow something off. Oh, exit. <laughs> First block. So, yeah, that's Eric and the Floaters. So, my final thoughts on the Spectrum Vega. Well, for a plug-and-play, it's a very good plug-and-play. For a Spectrum product, um, no. You know what I mean? It's... Stick to your normal spectrum, stick to, stick to your emulation, stick to, you know, whatever. There are much better ways to play this. And back, even back in 2015, there were better ways to play spectrum games. It's a nice bit of history. It's a nice collectible. It's interesting to put in and every now and again and just find some games that you didn't know about. But at that D-pad, it's unforgivable to be that sensitive. And on games like this that are so basic... All you needed to do was dial down the sensitivity just a little bit, and I think it would have been a winning product. It really would. Oh, and HDMI out, because the blurriness does my head in. It really, really does. So, nice idea. Uh, shame that the Vega Plus went so off the rails. And talking about the Vega Plus, so when I was looking at the price of these, there was a Vega Plus that just sold for, um, was it £250 or something like that? No, it was more than that. It was 1,000 and two, you know, something like that. I'll have a look in a bit. It was a lot of money. It was one of those that uh, it's a stupid collector's item because so few were made and it's terrible. But this, if you can fit, get one for under 20 quid, pick one up. If you see somebody selling one for 70 quid, walk away. 
don't bother. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you all again next time. Bye.